Hello and welcome to Once More with Feeling. I'm your host Edmund Scribbins and joining me for another week is... Yes, hello again. So again, this week we'll be doing the usual discussing what music we've been listening to and discussing the new mono albums. Um, oh, what are they called? Uh, Rays of Darkness and The Last Dawn. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, that impressionable upon me, but we'll get to that later. So yeah, uh, what things have you been listening to past week? Um, a lot of perfume, personally. Yeah. I've seen them live, so it makes sense to get stuck in and listen to a lot of stuff for them. Fair enough. And a uh, new California single, which is really good. <laughs> is and it? Um, a few other things as well, I don't think. Uh, is anything it? you've been on? Um, just odd things. is kind of been a bit the same as it was the other week just more actually no it's changed a bit i just need to... just trying to remember i've been keeping up with them um, listening to a lot more of well re-listening through uh sky blue which has been a lot of fun mainly listening to universal flame and silent militia which are my two favorite tracks from the album as you probably mentioned last week yeah um, also, one track that I've gotten a bit addicted to uh, from Psycho Stick's new album, Bruce Campbell. Oh, uh, good old Psycho Stick. Which is exactly what it says on the tin. It is a song about Bruce Campbell. You can't really go wrong with Bruce Campbell. He's a fun guy. <laughs> and it does go into sort of stalkery territory with the last lines going um, Bruce Campbell, Bruce Campbell I need the measurement of your chin <laughs> uh, no, it's like I say, this does not surprise me <laughs> gonna get a bone implant and then I'm gonna be your twin or something <laughs> like that I'm well, talking like a second, I must admit I've been uh, kind of having a bit of fun with this is not a song, this is a sandwich <laughs> this is not a song, it's a sandwich yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, and also um, more theory of the dead man with uh, the truth is I lied about everything which it funny. it's kind of disturbing how appropriate that is for my life uh, hey I mean theory of the dead man do kind of do stuff as I said once, once again they're pretty much Nickelback for better yeah just pissing off more more Nickelback fans sorry not really <laughs> Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> we'll try to be less dicks this week than we have been the last couple of weeks, but we can't promise anything. It's our oeuvre. Yeah. Anything else, Joe? Um, a lot of re-listening to stuff that I'd forgotten about, like um, Goggle Bordello. Uh, good old Goggle Bordello. Yeah, very fun band. I mean, yeah, I just checked my last of them, and other than mono obviously as we were reviewing it Calabina mm -hmm. and Perfume I've listened to only one other artist this week more than like twice yeah that being Dead Astronauts which we'll ah. be doing in the future yeah um oh yeah also the Tiger Lilies uh, I do remember you mentioning them yeah with because I'm really familiar with them so well you know the Banging in the Nails song yeah that's by them oh, okay for those who don't know the song it is about crucifying Jesus. I'm gonna guess what that title. Yeah, I I won't go into the lyrics because I don't want to risk. I I'm already walking the tightrope with offending people, so that I'm just going to let people look up on their own. <laughs> so you don't want to sing it for us? I'd really rather not. As I say, I'm already walking a tightrope. <laughs> um. Oh, also another one by them is Start a Fire, which is them singing about going around and burning things. That must sounds like a fun top. I mean, there's plenty of other bands that have done that. Yeah. Although this one is, it opens with, I like burning things. Burning things is swell. <laughs> I like burning things. It's the truth I tell. Well, that's not psychotic at all. Yeah, uh, well... By the way, I, I'm i not putting on a voice there. That is actually what the guy sounds like. <laughs> Just with a bit more gruffness in it. And that was barely even gruff. Yeah. It's more so, like this! Oi. 
So it's all right this, mate. Yeah. Yeah, Got to be a bit more gruff. That's way too gruff. Not as gruff as Billy Goats combined with Christian Bale. <laughs> oh, I'm really gravelly. I'm surprised I haven't come across a band that, considering the weird bands that do exist, I'm surprised I haven't come across one that does all their songs in Christian Bale's voice. Balecore. <laughs> Well, uh, when you consider that there is a band who dresses up and sings in Klingon. Well, I was just thinking Austrian Death Machine, you know. Everyone's oh. favourite Arnold Schwarzenegger to root band. <laughs> oh, Austrian Death Machine. I wonder if they've got anything coming out soon. I, mean, I don't know how they were working on an album, but it's been a long time. Yeah. Uh, well, let's see. I mean... Let's see. I'm just gonna think, why is there no more Cottage Lost yet? Um, pass. I think it's probably every member in Cottage Lost as part of the other projects as well, so mm. they're probably busy working on everything else. Uh, well, they did come out with Triple Brutal this year, but there's no Wikipedia link for that, so I don't know when exactly that came out. Yeah, we could check the site or something. Yeah. Something there somewhere. yeah, they've probably got something up. It shouldn't be too difficult to find out. Um,. By the way, it is actually quite relevant, me mentioning uh, Psycho Stick's new album. That will be a future show, either next week or the week after. I need to decide on a few things. Indeed. So suppose you're mentioning something we might do in the future by Psycho Stick, and I'm mentioning something we'll do in the future by the astronauts. Yeah. And we're listening to things in future. <laughs> it is 2007, which is the future. Uh, remember, we're trying to avoid too much tangenting. I was talking about the future. That's a future tangent, too. <laughs> oh, Lord. So, yeah, um, that's the main things I've been listening to. Oh, the other day, listening to a few anime tracks just out of curiosity because of your whole um, best openings type thing. Oh, uh, yeah, of course. Uh, it did admittedly give me some horrible, horrible ideas for Dungeons and Dragons. Of course. Is, everything gives you horrible ideas for Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, but Elfin Lead. Well, that's just screwed up in the first place, so. Okay. Yeah, but that coming into D and D, that's going to be quite a harrowing experience. Yeah, well, we have to deal with it, I guess. Um, Knowing you, you're going to probably throw something incredibly brutal at us, like you always do. I'm not that bad. Kind of. Like, hmm. You don't want to really, really rape people. Everything. <laughs> To be fair, I was the one to create the Necron Tyranid hybrid. That's just, that's just nasty. And it will so, get worse. Well, because it went down like a bitch. Yeah. It really should not have gone down as easily as it did. Really shouldn't, no. Yeah. But to be fair, there was only one of it. Well, that's probably for a good reason. Hmm. You get an introductory taster for it. I thought they would not want to fight more than one of those things. <laughs> It probably went down and one person killed it. Mm hmm? Like one person killed it and it on its own. Uh, two people. Yeah, fair. Very good Yeah. So. Um, so, yeah. Uh, on to the album. Albums, technically. But yeah. yeah. Well, it's two discs that it does effectively work as one album when you listen through it. Yeah, it's a double album. Yeah. Because the concepts. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, going in. I had never listened to mono before. This was an entirely new experience for me. Mm. And I have to say, there were a couple of songs that kind of got to me, but for the most part, it didn't really grab me that much. I think it's kind of a... Uh, just the way... I'm trying to make my words here. It's kind of an acquired taste, I think. Yeah. The key issue is I did admittedly find it rather repetitive. That's fair. Um, it felt like we get back to the songs needing to be shorter than they are and it felt like at least the first one uh, what's it called uh, uh, I can't remember the full title it's like Tides of Something and Glory Land Between Tides and Glory it felt like that could have been about half as long as it was mm, I can I, understand that yeah I kept one of the better tracks now I'd say yeah so I kept thinking, is this done? Are, <laughs> are we finished yet? I mean, I'm trying to think about the album, it's very much kind of building sound, soundscapes and stuff. Sometimes it works better than others. 
Yeah. I wouldn't say it's an absolutely terrible album. I'd just say it's not. They're not the sorts of albums that you can just listen to. No, I can agree with that very much. It's kind of thing. He's been the right kind of mindset for it. Yeah. Also, I find they work far better if you're playing a game or doing some writing. They work far better for that sort of situation. Oh, kind of background music and style stuff. Yeah. I wouldn't say they fade into the background, but they're much more atmospheric. Hmm. You can see that being a, a valid thing to say, at least. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I just feel like they're necessary. I mean, I'm going to be new to them myself. I mean, they only picked up on their other albums for once, back up with. Mm hmm. But it's very much a case of if I'm in the right mood for it, I can just you know sit back and just listen to it. But otherwise, I generally don't unless I'm in the right kind of state. Sometimes I feel ah, I feel like listening to this particular album. Mm. I can just completely lose myself in it and I just sit and listen to the entire thing without even thinking about it. Yeah. Or doing anything else. Other times, I think it's not right time for it. Yeah, it's like um, with uh, Devin Townsend's album Ghost. If people hadn't guessed, I am a massive Devin Townsend fanboy. <laughs> well, I mentioned this last time. True. So. <laughs> but well, not last video, but last time I was here. Yeah. Um, but that album is very good to relax to, and if you are trying to get work done and you need a sort of calming influence, it's a very good album to put on and just go, right, I'm at ease, I can just get into the flow of things. But um, other times, it just doesn't work because you'll be thinking, I need something to really get me pumped up and, in some cases, feel angry. And Ghost, you would never say, works with that sort of emotion. Yeah, that's what I kind of like about certain albums, like both Ghost and the Mono albums, in fact, is that they're really, really good if you're in the right mood for them. Yeah. And they're always there in your library, saying, okay, and if I feel in this particular mood, I can go and listen to them. It's mm. kind of something to fall back on if you're feeling up for a certain thing. Yeah. But like, yeah. I mean, of the tracks from Mono, I'd say the ones that work best for me, just as a sort of general situation, Kanata. Indeed, that's probably my favourite track from the double album, actually. It's yeah. just it's a real nice piece. Mm. Uh, the Last Dawn. Okay. Yeah. And Recoil Ignite. I think, personally, I'd say the second album, um, Rays of Darkness, is probably the more interesting of the two. Yeah. It tries to experiment a bit, a lot more, I think. Yeah. So the first I... album is, well, The Last Dawn is very much similar to the uh, other albums I've heard by them. Mm hmm. Well, so Rays of Darkness moves quite a lot. I mean, there's an opening track, is a lot kind of more heavy and progressive than the uh, other albums. Yeah. It's got the 13 minute length, same as um, Tides of uh, Tides of Dawn, or uh, whatever it's called, uh, Lamenting Tides, even. Yeah. It's got the same kind of length, but it has more going on, it kind of builds up over time, and it, it feels, it doesn't feel as long, even though it's actually longer. Yeah, yeah. I definitely agree. That's why I, I think I would agree that the second of the two albums is much more interesting. It just there is a lot more sound-wise going on. I mean, the second track, Surrender, it brings in the brass instruments, and I really like that. Mm. It adds an extra kind of level of interestingness to it. Interestingness yeah. is not really a word, but... I think the audience gets what we mean. Yeah, they've got the third track there, um, the Hannah Holds the Truth brings in some vocals, actually, which is really quite interesting. Fills that... up, and then suddenly it just has a bunch of kind of screamo, kind of post-metal style stuff. Yeah. When the vocals started, I, I did have a moment of, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, I did as well. I was not expecting that, because everything else I've heard about has been instrumental. So. Mm. Um, yeah, I, as I say, they're not bad albums. I would I would say I'd recommend giving them a listen, but I wouldn't... It's not the sort of music that I'd necessarily come back to unless I was looking for specific music to fit you know say i was writing a scene for a movie and i needed particular music to fit that scene mm, like i understand i mean it's they're very much kind of cinematic and kind of soundscape style stuff as it is which, yeah it's because it seems like it's been made for movies mm -hmm. it hasn't but it also got a lot of influence from like soundtracks and films and stuff yeah so which also being a huge fan of soundtracks in general is probably why i like them so much mm. Well, the serial amount of stuff I listen to is soundtracks and a lot of similar stuff, so it just works for me. Yeah, which is fair enough. I mean, it is very much, as you say, an acquired taste, and I think I might at some point go back to them, just give it all a full listen through to see if my moods 
you know, if I'm in a different mood when I'm listening to it, if that affects anything. So I'll give me a second try, I reckon, yeah. Just, yeah. obviously, when, when you think, okay, then I'm in the mood for something kind of like this, and think, oh, okay, I have that. Yeah. Give it a shot, see what you think. Mm. Of course, it might not work, you might go back to it and get bored. But. Mm. Yeah. but as I say, it is worth looking into. It's not my kind of thing, but I would recommend it, if that makes sense. So I think you can tell that is good, it's not necessarily what you like. Yeah. Really. Um, so, what are we having now? <laughs> uh, it's a bit difficult. I mean, as I say, I've not heard anything before by Mono, so you might as well take it from here, explaining what their sound is typically like. Fair enough. Hey, um, Mono are, I believe, a uh, quartet, I think, from Japan. Most of the stuff they do is instrumental kind of soundscapes. Um, a lot of orchestral stuff as well. The last album uh, for my parents, we were very, very heavy on the orchestral side of things. Uh, so I think they actually used an actual orchestra doing the recording of it as well. So um, they have relatively long tracks, kind of building up over time, all kind of sweeping patterns. Very, very interesting stuff. If it's your kind of thing, I said earlier on, it's watching quiet taste. If it's not the kind of thing you're interested in, then it's probably not worth looking at it. But uh, kind of shifts into kind of post-rock style stuff occasionally as well so if you're a fan of bands like uh, Safety of the Static or Pelican possibly then it may be worth checking out hmm. uh, just looking them up yeah a uh, four piece band um, who all played the glockenspiel <laughs> uh, yeah glockenspiel is a great instrument hmm. um, uh, the discography they released a fair few albums have uh, yes um, quite a while it's what since no, no, no. So, yeah. have a relatively regular release schedule as well. Every couple of years, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it seems to average to about two to three years. Indeed. But anyway, um, what's your favourite tracks? Do you say? Obviously, you mentioned Kanata. But yeah, um, yeah, Kanata. It would be between Kanata and the Last Dawn that would be my favourites of the album. Yes, I mean, the Last Dawn is an interesting piece. Actually, it's kind of very uh, quite relaxing. I mean, it's supposed to make sense for like the finale. I think um, Buffer goes into which starts out really quite heavy. Mm. So they start you down, and then suddenly quite a good starts up, and it's like whoa. <laughs> they come before the storm, I guess. Which again, it makes sense when you consider double album and all that sort of thing. It makes sense to have that sort of progression. Yeah. It sounds. I mean, very much. Um, I mean, if you look at the actual artworks, the albums as well, they actually combine together to make one full image as well. Mm -hmm. cool. There's obviously they're supposed to be together as part of the same thing, but it even says in the packaging like part one and part two. So mm. it further emphasises the fact that it is a, a collective. Yeah. Also being released in the same year. Well, same day. In fact, they were released together. So. Don't have Depends. a wiki page yet, so. Yeah, it would be. Yeah. Not too level long. Sorry. Yes, yeah, not necessarily that reliable. Sometimes. Uh, yeah. Well, all I need to say about reliability with Wikipedia is don't look up ancient Greece. Don't look up anything. Uh, I specify yeah. ancient Greece because it just you look at it and go, eh? Good answer. Because. Hmm? Sure. Because if you know anything about history, you ancient history, you're just going, but that contradicts and that what? <laughs> I don't get it. But yeah, as you were saying. Uh, personal favourite tracks myself probably would be Kanata, um, We Call Ignite, um, possibly Legion Castles actually. Uh, that, that good. Also Surrender as well because that brass is just lovely. <laughs> no brass instruments. Yeah. I'm not going to lie, one of the key problems I did have with the album is that it's why the things like Kanata stands out to me. Most of the albums, most of the songs seem to kind of blend into each other. So I, I found myself going, uh, has the, did the last track end? Has the last track start? Has this track started? I don't, I... There's nothing I seem to do a lot actually from my past, which is the entire album just sounds like one long track. Sometimes, mm. so. uh, but cases can work, but other cases not necessarily. Yeah, the problem is you run the risk of ending up a bit like Dragon Force. Why do project? Yeah, uh, just the entire album sounds like one long song about dragons and wizards and dragon wizards, which is entirely po possible in D and D. But <laughs> yeah, um, what kind of rating would you give it? I think that was out of five. 
Uh, I. Or do you want to do as a as a combined thing, or as each individual album? So no. Um, I'd be inclined to, as a whole, give it a three three point five. But that's okay. that's based on my personal as it stands with um, not really being able to get into the tracks at the time. That rating might change if I give it another few listens. Have to wait okay. and see. Uh, personally, probably give it an um, possibly a four. I'd say. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a lot of good quality stuff there, but I can agree with the fact that some certain songs just seem to blend together a little bit too much. Yeah. So I personally say. The other album I've got for my parents is arguably a little bit better, I say. Mm-hmm. It kind of it has the kind of same all the tracks blend into each other a bit, but it works better because it kind of progress further through the albums a bit better. Mm-hmm. Does it feel a bit more like a concept album in that case? Very much so, yeah. As everything flows quite nicely, but here. Go. Wait a minute. Sorry about that. More crackling. Technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> always fun. Always fun. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, so yeah, as you were saying before, it went crackly. Where did it go off? Uh, I forget. Uh, <laughs> Live, ladies and gents. So yeah, um, from the way you talk about it, I'm just, I get the feeling that these albums probably not good as introductory ones. Uh, the problem I'd say is that a lot of the stuff does sound, they've got the same kind of feel for most of their stuff, so mm. I don't really have an introductory album as such. It's a case of sometimes you feel in the mood for it, sometimes you don't really. Mm-hmm. It's kind of hard to uh, get in the mood if you don't know what it's like in the first place, that's the problem really. <laughs> yeah. I reckon if you're someone that, like myself who does like, enjoy a lot of soundtrack works, you probably get a lot into it a lot easier. Mm. Whereas if you're like me and you're generally much more into album work, this would probably not be the sort of thing for you. Indeed. But yeah, but going back to where we were, oh, I probably would recommend it if you're a fan of kind of long soundscape works, possibly like um, uh, something probably of a suitable film actually. <laughs> and not coming into my head. Um, well, you've got Lux Turner, of course, which. This is true, actually, yeah, things like, uh, things that Clint Mansell's done, like soundtracks to The Fountain, Requiem for a Dream, Black Swan, etc. We well, you know Black Swan as such, because, you know, classical. Yeah. But his work on Noah actually makes sense, anyway. Mm. And also, I'm a huge fan of Clint Mansell myself, so it makes sense that I, like, want to get similar kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, kind of running out of steam with things to talk about with this album, aren't we? Well, yeah, that's true. I mean, I can see why it would make sense to have an easier time if both of us, like, really enjoyed it. Yeah. But uh, not everyone enjoys everything, so... Mm. And this is at least a I... bit a bit of a change from the last two weeks where both hosts have absolutely loved the album. So I guess in future episodes where not one of us doesn't like it as much, it'll be shorter episodes. Yeah. Otherwise it'll be one of us going, oh my god, that's amazing, the other one just going, uh, it's not that great, I don't like it. Mm-hmm. What am I talking about? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So. Um... Oh yeah, that's a point. Seeing as we're winding down, um, just to say, just in closing, it's worth a check out, but don't be surprised if you go between one extreme and the other in terms of opinion. That sounds pretty accurate, yeah. I recommend it's worth giving a shot, because it may be the thing you've been looking for, but on the other hand, it's quite possible that, like Edmund here, he'll listen to it and think, eh, I'm not sure it works for me. Mm. Maybe we'll just, uh, I mean, as a concept album, it makes more sense to listen to the whole thing. But if you want to just check out one track from the set, I probably would say Canada's the best choice. Yeah, I definitely agree there. Um, so, yeah, with that finished with, um, yeah, you were saying last night about making an album recommendation to discuss on a future show that neither host would know. Yes, indeed. I think it could be an interesting idea if you decide on this your show. Mm. Well, I mean, there's plenty of options. So just well, yeah, to... literally hundreds of albums released every what, week, even. Yeah, which makes... It's going to be interesting to see two people's opinions of which neither have any like, predisclosed like or dislike of the particular artist. Yeah, as I say, next week probably going to be covering the new Psycho Stick album, just because... Psycho Stick. Yeah, <laughs> and that'll be a very different episode to, well, the last two and this episode because that'll be covering a comedy album. Well, so it's kind of comedy. 
more explicitly comedy. <laughs> this is true, but you know, variety is a good thing. So yeah, the more variety we have, the better it will be. I'd say. Yeah. Which is love variety. <laughs> oh dear. So hey, I guess this is the end. Yeah. Um, I don't know whether it's on the show of the world, I'm not quite sure. So. <laughs> well, it's the end for this episode. Uh, thanks for helping me out continue with this whatever it is that I've got going. Show, thing. Yeah. It's um, a thing. And I'll be sticking with the Once More is Feeling title just because it seems to work well enough. It works, we've been used to it now, so. Yeah. We'll probably look back at this in the future and be like, why do we ever you know, contemplate this title? It works. Yeah. So, yeah, that's it for this week. Catch you all next week with Psycho Stick and Revenge of Vengeance. Which is probably the best title. <laughs> with Bruce Cancel. <laughs> uh, that's goodbye from me. And goodbye from me. Bye bye.